Hello again, I am Jim Bob and I have remembered to take myself off mute tonight. <laughs> Welcome back to Challenge Mode, uh, the F1 Manager series where we try and make it as difficult for ourselves as possible. Uh, we have plenty of rules and regulations and restrictions that uh, are designed to make the game much more challenging. Uh, you can see all of those in the video description below, uh, so feel free to check those out if you're not aware of them or want a refresher. Uh, we have had four races so far and they have not gone amazingly well. We are definitely struggling. Combination of a poor car, uh, not the greatest staff. Uh, we're good with our aero guy. We replaced an, um, our aero guy and got in aero, uh, at Alessandro Cinelli. Uh, at the start of the season uh, but we didn't have the money to replace our technical chief and he is definitely uh, a bit of a drag on the team at the moment uh, we can't replace him now until his contract expires so we've got him for another two seasons um, before we can actually replace him with somebody better that isn't helping uh, and we have very young inexperienced drivers who are finding their feet in terms of pace we have been working on getting them upgraded we have been uh, trying to give them little boosts where we can uh, we don't have a reserve driver of such uh, we've got Hulkenberg we haven't changed him so these two are just running every single session uh, trying to get as much time and experience on track as possible uh, in a uh, you know in an attempt to, to level them up a little bit quicker uh, but yes, it's been very tough so far this season, and it's going to continue to be very tough, I think, for a little while. Uh oh, my microphone just disconnected. Let me check if the right one is on. Yes, there we go. That was weird. Uh, right, uh, quick check on the calendar to see what's coming up. Uh, we have uh, a new ATR period starting in a couple of days. Uh, we upgrade our tour center uh, in a couple of days. Uh, that's all we can see uh, at, at a quick glance. Let's take a look at our car. We have 11 days to go until the Miami Grand Prix. Do we have an upgrade on the way? Uh, yes, we do. Our chassis will go live uh, for the day of practice. So we'll have to emergency manufacture a couple of those. Get those on the car, try and give us a little bit of a boost let's advance some time there's a the tour center upgrade done uh, check our inbox there we go uh, we have low stock on chassis we're about to replace those anyway we have low stock on suspensions uh, how good is our suspension right now uh, it's not bad Brake cooling could do with another improvement. Uh, we are working on an underfloor as well, I believe. Yes, we are. So I might do another suspension after this chassis upgrade. Uh, or I might start on a front wing. Just do a basic front wing upgrade. Uh, let's see where we stand when the uh, chassis upgrade completes. So we'll have four staff to play about with at that point uh, so I'm not going to worry about replacing the suspension or adding any more suspensions just yet because if we're about to make a new one uh, there's no point burdening ourselves with unnecessary additional parts it's kind of wasting our money uh, likewise with the chassis we're about to make new chassis brand new chassis so there's no point making another spare one for a part that's about to become obsolete uh, helipad upgrade is done uh, board are currently satisfied with our work. Uh, you can see they're disappointed with performances from the last two races. Um, we started out quite promisingly at Sakir. What did we do at Sakir? I can't remember how that went. So let's have a look. Where do we finish? 15th and 16th. So they were happy with 15th and 16th. And yet when we went to Jeddah... Oh yeah, 17th and non-classified. <laughs> they were satisfied with that. Uh, Melbourne, uh, we were 18th and 19th, way off the pace. Yeah, I can understand why they were a bit disappointed with that. And then uh, last night at Imola, uh, we didn't have the greatest result either, 17th and 18th, and again, two laps down. So yeah, I can see why they're a little disappointed. 
Uh, right. Uh, inbox. Uh, the helipad is done. Uh, we're still not in a position to really capitalise. And that is a bit more expensive, that upgrade. So we'll leave it at that for now. Uh, but we will look at uh, boosting that once we start getting a bit more competitive. Race simulator is upgraded. Now that is important. And our chassis is done as well. So uh, let's just clear out these uh, other em emails here. Our new ATR period has started. Uh, so we're about to uh, go ahead and make some new stuff. Let's drop the... Oh, that's 8 mil. Oh, sorry about that, I just had to uh, sneeze a couple of times. Uh, that is an expensive upgrade, 8 million. Uh, but we do need it. Um, so we'll go ahead and drop that on. We absolutely have to get that thing maxed out ASAP. So, uh, right, uh, cars. Let's build this new chassis. Let's take a look at how good it is. So we're getting uh, a little bit of a boost, uh, as you can see, across the board. It's going to have a, non a minimal impact on our engine cooling, but it's going to give us little little boosts to our cornering downforce, a little boost to our dirty air performance, a little boost to our DRS top speed, and a small boost to our uh, regular top speed and acceleration. It's not going to, you know, be earth-shatteringly vast in those changes. It's not going to move us up the grid in ranking. But, you know, it all adds up. So, uh, we're going to emergency manufacture uh, three. Just in case we prang one in practice, which, given our drivers' uh, inexperience, is definitely a possibility. So, that's going to cost us a million. Part development is going to be expensive uh, to, you know try and squeeze these on as quick as we can and now we can go ahead and look at developing something new so we do have hours available but I'm, I might want to wait until we finish the underfloor so I can get more engineers on it let's have a look a front wing will be good for our cornering performance and might give us a little speed boost it will also improve our brakes uh, which is definitely important so let's see what uh, a full allocation of hours could do for that. Remember we were limited to uh, two major upgrades which is using hours like this per part per season and that includes pre-season as well. So uh, we have to pick and choose what you know major upgrades we want to do very carefully uh, across the entire calendar year. Let's have a look at just getting the absolute most out of this upgrade okay so improving the airflow or decreasing the airflow sensitivity boost will give us uh, better performance in medium and high speed dirty air and improve our performance in low medium and high speed normal cornering if I go the other way uh, it actually improves our dirty air across the board probably a bit more effectively but it is going to hurt our normal cornering and our acceleration given where our car is right now we probably don't want to do that we probably want to go that way uh, and let's have a look at the airflow at the front uh, hmm. I might go that way as well just to try and really boost our dirty air performance by simplifying the uh, the aero around the front of the car. It will also give us an extra little boost to our cornering, but it does take away that little top speed boost we were going to get. It hurts our acceleration as well. How much am I actually gaining? I'm getting a 0.1 percentage point on my low speed 
losing uh, a bit on my <clears throat> on my brake cooling. I'm happy to sacrifice a little bit of top speed to improve our cornering speed. I think, um, especially dirty air performance, we want that to be uh, a little bit more um, punchy. Uh, and of course, the better we can make the brakes, uh, the more consistent our drivers can be, and better we can look after our tyres as well. So. Yeah, let's go with that. How long is that going to take? Uh, if we go with the maximum engineers we have right now, that's 58 days. That's going to drop it just after the British Grand Prix. But we can add another engineer in when the engineer when the engineer when the underfloor is completed, and then we'll have five engineers available for another project. So. Uh, what about if I rush it? If I rush it, they will get we'll get it quicker, but we will lose a chunk of uh, expertise gain because we'll be finishing it faster, and it will also add about fifty percent of the cost as well. Uh, Thirty-nine days would drop that for Canada, which would be nice, but. Yeah, we're just going to go uh, normal. Uh, we can't go intense. That's one of the new rules that we added in. So, yeah, we'll just go normal. There we go. So, we've got a new part started. And then we must remember to transfer an engineer from the underfloor project. In fact, actually, let me see. Can I actually take someone off the underfloor project without slowing it down? No. Uh, and the underfloor... Oh, actually, 14 days until the Spanish Grand Prix. I can actually get away with doing that. So, yeah, let's do that. Let's take an engineer off there. And let's add an engineer onto that. And that's now 54 days, which is two days before Silverstone. Excellent. So that'll give us time to get those manufactured before the Grand Prix. And that's it. That's all we can do. Uh, we still don't have that third slot yet. We are still 24 days away from getting that third slot with a design center upgrade. Uh, is there anything else that we need to do before we go into the race weekend? Uh, let's check our drivers. Do we have any points? Uh, not for Freddy. Not for Felipe. Who cares about Nico? Uh, what about our staff? No. Uh, all right, so let's set some performance targets. Our car is not fitted with the new chassis yet. Let's do that now before we forget. There we go. We've got one spare, so we've got to be careful. And let's see, where does our car sit? Um, very badly against the average on the grid, let alone the cars around us. Uh, and our brake cooling has actually gone down in rank. We were 11th before this weekend, so uh, we have actually lost out a little bit of, in terms of grid positioning on brake cooling. Uh, that front wing upgrade will change that. Let's have a look at how we stack up against Williams. They're the team we're in the biggest competition with, so we're faster than them in uh, top speed and acceleration. Uh, we are faster than them in low speed cornering, which will help at this circuit. Uh, better DRS performance in terms of top speed. We're very, very close in acceleration. Um, again, the slightly, it's, it's nip and tuck with the dirty air cornering, but we do have the edge in the low speed stuff. And we have better brakes and engine cooling as well. Uh, next team that we're fighting against that is yet to score is Haas, and they are head and shoulders above us, as you can see. A uh, fair bit of work to count, uh, catch up to them. Let's take a quick look at McLaren. See, McLaren are a little bit closer to us, um, but obviously they've got much better drivers than we do. So, mm, yeah, we'll see how we can develop and if we can actually overhaul McLaren, that would be nice. In terms of performance, it'll take us a while to overhaul their points. Uh, so, given where we are, uh, performance targets, again, are pretty much going to be non-existent. Uh, the incentive is to get two cars into Q2, we're going to be lucky to get one into Q2, let alone two. 
Uh, finish position two in the top 15 is unlikely. Um, maybe we could have snuck one car in, but not both, I don't think. Not without safety cars or uh, driver retirements. Uh, finish position one in the top 15 for two races. Ooh, it's possible, but unlikely. Uh, and there's no point sitting in the guarantees because we're not going to improve on any of those at all. So um, let's go to practice. We're in the state of year-round summer. It's the Miami Grand Prix, and we're here in Florida at the Miami International Autodrome. The streets of Miami Gardens will come alive with the roar of racing, and the excitement is only just beginning. Spectacle is the name of the game here in Miami, with a stadium at the heart of this track. With long straights and S-bends, not unlike Suzuka's Sector 1, proper ERS management is sure to give drivers an edge towards victory. At this early stage in the season, there are still plenty of opportunities for things to change. In this sport, there simply are no guarantees. Okay then, let's get to it. Okay, so we have wet practice for Friday. That could be first, second or both sessions. Uh, it would have been nice if we had wet quality. That would have given us a chance to maybe get our cars into Q2. Hmm. Okay, well, let's get our cars set up. Uh, so, car parts. Uh, yeah, we're going to run like this. There's no point running new parts in this Grand Prix uh, because we don't have performance to take advantage of that. We don't have any big upgrades on the car yet so we're probably not going to switch anything over until Spain because we get a new underfloor at Spain and that will hopefully give us a little bit of performance boost uh, and if we can then couple that with fresh engines we might actually be able to sneak a little bit further up the grid for that particular race uh, so let's get some cars set up let's start with Freddy's car let's go with uh, a 9 and a 14 no wait I'm looking at the wrong group the uh, the wrong page looking at my my uh, Barcelona setups Miami um, I thought 14 seemed a bit high we want a 13.5 uh, we're gonna go with a 7.5 front wing uh, a 37 on the roll button uh, a 3.45 on the camber and a 0.15 on the toe. That's not going to work. Our braking stability is way off there. Uh, let's try going to a 4.6. That's even worse. Okay. Um, I do have a 2.8, uh, but that requires dropping the front, the rear wing down to a 13. Uh, pushing that to 3.5, pushing that up to 0.45, even that doesn't fit. Wow, this is a... Uh, this is a bit of a puzzle, this one. Um, even a 1.9 isn't going to get me there. So, this is this is uncharted territory. I don't have uh, a starting setup that is going to fit in these tolerances. So, we're going to have to wing this one completely and just see how we do. I'm going to go back to a 13.5. Uh, I'm going to drop that down to a, a 0.7. And let's just see how we do with that. Um, just go a 4.6 and a 0.75. Yeah, let's swing it and see how that works. Uh, we're going to go with 18 laps here at Miami. Uh, drop the pace down. Let's have a look at doing a, a setup for Felipe. Uh, can we actually get a starting setup that will fit on this car? Uh, we'll go with a 7.5. Should we go with a yeah, a 7.5, uh, a 13.5, a 3.7. So we'll try the same setup we tried to put on uh, Felipe's uh, Freddy's car that wouldn't work and see if it will work on this one. Everything there is in the tolerances, so we'll give that one a go. Uh, we'll go to 18 laps, drop the pace. 
So let's send our boys out to practice. Ready to check? Ready to check. Okay, should be green now. There we go. I'm hoping we can get uh, some good uh, race points from, uh, uh, in terms of driver points, um, from both of our drivers at this weekend. Um, the DRS zones are quite big. Still oh, coming. Rain, I forgot Probably. to check for that. Okay, that should just be inters across the board there. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping we can get some good points. Uh, uh, for race performance out of our drivers this weekend with the DRS straights being quite long uh, I'm hoping that we can get some overtakes in and, or at least make some attempts maybe some successful defences try and really maximise how many points they can get this weekend uh, to uh, boost their development uh, we really do need to get them running faster than they are uh, Evening Colin, how are you doing? way there it is so let's call both guys in put them onto some inters yeah copy that so far Vesti seems to have a little bit of an edge over Felipe this weekend Ooh, okay, so this is the setup that we had to completely wing because we didn't know where we stood and now we know that we are way off. Uh, let's go with the 13 um, on the rear wing. That should be good. Uh, cornering is... Eh, roll bar's way off, so we're going to go with the 2.8. We're going to see if we can co-opt um, a setup that I do already have. Uh, which is a 75, 13, 2, 8, a 3.5 and a 0.45. That's the one we tried to put on but couldn't. This one... Um, well, we, I don't know where we stand here with the... Uh, with the oversteer and braking values yet. Uh, but let's try making that little tweak to the toe. And that gets it as close as we can to... Need the initial starting setup that I wanted to put on but wouldn't fit. Uh, and let's see if that actually works. So we'll put on the inters. Let's have a look at Felipe's partial feedback. Uh, oh, that one's also a 13 on the rear. Well, actually, it could go either way. But I would imagine it would go to a 13. Uh, braking stability is way off. Let's go to a let's go to the same setup uh, so let's do that 7.5 13 2.8 3.5 0.45 yeah let's see how that works uh, again we need to switch over to inters and off we go Having a day in your scratcher today. What, what? What's your scratcher? Dare I ask? <laughs> Far too cold to do anything. Uh, kitchen sink is blocked too. Ah, oh, it doesn't sound so good. I've actually been uh, a bit busy today reorganising things, um, moving stuff around, move my fridge and microwave to the other side of the room, and move some shelving uh, units around. And I've got uh, 
my little larder and board game section uh, reorganised and I've got my second older TV set up again. Ah, oh, it's a vernacular for bed. I did wonder, but I wasn't sure. Uh, yeah, I got my second TV and my older TV set back up. It's just been sort of tucked in a corner, you know, on the floor, not really doing anything for the last... Oh, God, 12 months now since I've had my uh, new TV. Can't really call it a new TV anymore. Um, so, yeah, it's, just, it's not been plugged in. It's just been tucked out of the way for the last year. Uh, but i got it set up now. got it hooked up to the PS4. Uh, so it means I can now watch uh, some Blu-rays uh, and, and stuff like that or do some streaming uh, of Disney or whatever uh, or watch some YouTube on my on my TV rather than my phone while I'm while I'm gaming, uh, which is quite nice. But it was hard work lugging all that stuff around on my own, so uh, yeah, I was absolutely knackered earlier on. A bit more uh, chilled and relaxed now, I've had something to eat and just cabbaged for uh, the last hour or two. And the rain has stopped already, that didn't take long. But we can't trust the uh, weather thing there, we can see it's actually uh, the rain has stopped, apparently, but in terms of the track condition, it's going to stay damp for the next 12 minutes, and then it's going to go to wet. So, yeah, we can't really pay much attention to uh, the fact that it says it's dry, because that, we that water level is probably going to fluctuate quite a bit. Or is it? Yeah, there we go. It's going back up again. And there it goes up again. This is the wet that's coming. Oh, it's going to stay wet for a while. So this is going to be full wet territory, I think. Possibly. Or at least very close to it. We have had a crash. We've got a virtual safety car. Uh... Who has crashed and where? Gasly's crashed and is out for the rest of the session. We've had a crash. Let's take a closer look. Now look at this. It was the Alpha Tauri driver involved. Oh, under pressure from the Ferrari just locked him up and, and went straight off. into the barrier. I think it's going to stay damp for the rest of the session. Let's see if we can uh, just stretch these What's inters. your thoughts on coming in or doing any more? Okay, so our uh, our guest hodgepodge setup there um, has gone in at 85%. There's still a significant tweak somewhere that's going to need to be made there. What about Felipe? What do you think? Ooh, we almost nailed it. So a tiny tweak to the toe is all that's going to be needed there. Okay, let's leave them out on track. Because they had a bit of a broken run. Let's just get a little bit more track knowledge. That'll help take the pressure off if it rains in the second session as well. Track is pretty dry. 
just let the tyres melt themselves at this point. We're going to be out of fuel in a minute anyway, so I don't even know if we'll make the chequered flag. Nope, there we go. Uh, cool car in. And same for uh, Felipe. Okay, Drogovic is in. Let's have a look at the tow. Let's go that way. Oh, Vesti actually ran out of fuel. He didn't make the pits. Okay, well, it's no biggie. It's the end of the session. The chequered flag is now out. We need to retire the car. Copy. All right, there we go. So uh, let's have a look at what we need to change for Vesti. It's still the roll bar. Okay, uh, it's going to be a 1.9. This is going to be my first 1.9 setup for this car, for this circuit. Uh, we do still need to tweak the rear wing. I'm going to drop that down to a 7. go to an 8 and drop this don't want to move too far away let's go let's go to a 7 and, and let's see how that works I'm hoping that's a big enough change to affect the uh, the rear wing there uh, let's go with medium tyres for this session we go with 18 laps again. Uh, Felipe, I'm going to go with uh, 25 laps because his setup is pretty much nailed. Radio check. Radio check. rain coming so it is going to affect both sessions all right well let's just do as much running as we can in the dry while we can Hey there, Mr. Water. Good to see you. Oh, I look away for two seconds, say hello, and we get taken out by Verstappen, I think. It's a collision! Did we Here's get taken replay. out or did we take We're out Verstappen? Just watching the Red Bull. Yeah, Verstappen took us out. Oh, he took it. Oh, How there? did he not hit that the Mercedes there? Lot of damage. I, uh, that could really be a retirement. With that. It is. Oh, and it's Freddy as well. It's the one car I didn't want to be removed. Oh, great. Terminal gearbox damage. So that gearbox is gone completely. That's going to need uh, a new one. Yeah, Tires are, are wrecked. Rear wing is destroyed. Anything else? Maybe there was something else before the replay that I missed. I would imagine that at the very least we've got minor damage to the suspension and uh, chassis as well. Uh, wet weather is going to come out to play very soon. Yep, 
see we know where Felipe's setup is it's either we've either gone the right way with the uh, one click of toe or we've gone the wrong way which is a, a very simple fix we just go two clicks in the opposite direction to uh, counteract that change and his setup's at 100% Vesti was much more um, of a guesswork to actually get that one close to being done and now that's another session lost effectively it was right at the beginning of the session as well which is so frustrating all right how wet is it going to get uh just into weather by the look of it okay we pretty much can just go straight back out on these tyres here. We're not looking for any spectacular pace, we just want to get some time on track. It's all surprised if we have uh, damage to our engine and our ERS unit in Vesti's car. We know that the gearbox is written off, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if those other components took damage as well. That was a very heavy hit. How does it feel? Okay, we went the wrong way then <laughs> with Felipe's tone to change, but we can correct that easily. So Vesti is essentially. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, Drogovic is essentially racing with a 100% setup this weekend. Um, still, you know, going to have to try and figure out where we are with uh, with Vesti. How much feedback did I actually get from him? Any at all? Uh, I got one bit of feedback out of the five, so that's not really very helpful at all. Okay, someone crashed. There's an album crashing as well as going wide. We just had a crash on the no, track. it's Claire. Let's have a look. Watch this. There's Leclerc. I want to happen right in front of us. They've lost control. And uh, there's the just crash. Slightly dinged his wing. This is going to be tricky for Vesti. Yes, Colin. It's uh, it's not going to be an easy race for him. Again, we're going to stay out on these inters, even though the track's dried up now, because we're in the up, the good upswing on that curve, and we're going to call them in in a couple of laps anyway. So we don't want to have to reset the curve just for a, a few laps on dry. Might as well stay out for just you know half those laps, if not, you know, less, to get me to 75% for this session. There we go. Uh, the, the bad news as well with Vesti being taken out so early is that he didn't run for half the session, so he won't get many points for taking part in FP2, if any at all. He only made five minutes. Oh, he was unceremoniously uh, torpedoed by Max there. So that will uh, hurt his driver development a little bit. Max gets a three-place penalty for the race as a result. But we certainly came out of that worse than he did.
Right, let's have a look at the damage. Uh, oh, yeah, wow. The ERS was totaled. The engine was pretty much totaled. Uh, we've lost an entire raft of, po of components there, so... <sighs> That's not good. Let's just deal with this, first of all. So we want that there. Uh, we want him on the track for 25 laps. It's going to be a dry session, according to our um, weather sensor. But uh, I don't think that's going to be all that accurate. Uh, we'll have, just have to hope on that one. Uh, let's see. We are going to have to run pretty much the entire session on one setup chance here. So... Uh, there's nothing I can save car part wise for this car. Um, well, the one thing we did get feedback on, we actually was the, the big change with the roll bar, the one line, and that was spot on perfect. So, fingers crossed, it goes that way with the rest of the uh, setup changes as well. So, we have to go on to engine number two. 3% won't even get through this one session. Uh, the engine's gone, effectively. Uh, we're on to our last remaining ERS module already. That's really bad. Um, that's really bad to lose an entire module that quickly. The gearbox had already ticked over into uh, damage, but it was still good for at least two more race weekend practice sessions. At least two more. So that's a bit of a loss. I have to go on to our second gearbox. Uh, and now it puts me in a position where I think maybe I should do the same with Felipe, swap his parts over for the race. Try and keep him competitive with Vesti, because Vesti's going to be a lot quicker as a result of uh, brand new components. Uh, let me also check what other parts did I lose. So... Um, I didn't lose a chassis. Uh, I did lose a front wing. So I'm down to four of those now. I know I did, I did lose a chassis, look. Hmm. Okay, well, let's see if we can get through this weekend without having to emergency manufacture another one. That's our brand new chassis and one's gone already. Uh, side pods are fine. Uh, underfloor is fine. Suspension. Uh, we lost the suspension as well. Uh, again, we'll see if we can get through the weekend without having to replace one. So basically, as long as we don't prang the wall or another car in FP3 or Quali, we'll be okay. And we'll be able to get through the weekend without any more emergency manufacturing. Uh, run plan. We've got to go for the entire session, really. So we're going to have to go. I'm going to go 38 laps of fuel, and let's just keep our fingers crossed that that setup is going to be as close to perfect as we can get it. Send the build to Red Bull. Thanks to Max. Oh, it'd be nice if I could do that. It really would. Radio check. All right, so Felipe goes out first because he's got a lot less fuel in the car. It's green now. And there goes Besky. He is a driver we might actually see on the grid in a couple of years' time, hopefully. Or at least, you know... Uh, in a more advanced role. I think he is the, actually, if I, if I remember rightly, he is the replacement reserve driver for Mercedes now, um, given that uh, Nick De Vries went to uh, Alpha Tauri. I know he's in the Mercedes Young Driver program. I imagine he'll get the call-up and become their new reserve driver um, to replace De Vries. And Drogovic is already the uh, reserve driver for Aston Martin. He was announced uh, a, what, a couple of months ago. 
or a month ago. It's just a shame that we had to <laughs> throw away all those components, those engine, the powertrain components. Right, this is the all important bit. Is this setup going to be good? What's your thoughts on coming in or it's better doing but more? it's not good enough. I've got to call him in and make some changes. We'll just have to sacrifice some track knowledge uh, the setup is more important to the bonus score than the uh, track knowledge so that's a shame I was hoping it would be uh, uh, better than that but we can work with 93 uh, oh front wings way off so that needs to be an 8.5 maybe uh, we need to pull that in that in as well so theoretically that is it yeah this is a very unusual setup this is going to be my first 8.5 and it's going to be my first uh, on the front wing and my first 1.9 on the roll bar so I'll definitely write this one down once we've uh, finished it if we can get it to 100 uh, let's send him straight back out once we've made these changes I think someone's run wide. I should probably have taken a bit more fuel out of the car, but never mind. How's the balance? There we go. Uh, that is the 100 setup that we knew we were going to get. So it's all down to this one now. Okay, there we go. That's fully paced session done. He's looking pretty good. We've got our car park knowledge back up to 93. As long as it's above 85, that's all we really need. It'll keep going up because Vest is still on track. Oh, we almost nailed it. Uh, I don't think we can... Uh, well, maybe if we're lucky, we might just squeak 15 out of 15. We got 14 out of 15. That was the important thing. And it's a minor toe tweak, so we can gamble... Um, with a little tweak to the toe and we need to get it right or we get it wrong it might even with the restrictions it might even be obvious which way we need to go um, good session let's see he's going to make his way back to the garage he'll get a little bit of extra track acclimatization as a result of that did we get him up to 15 out of 15 not quite. It was close, though. All right, good recovery for, for Freddy there. 
so it is right on the edge so it has to go that way it's the only way it can go because it goes outside the tolerance window so let me write this down where's my pen there it is this is a brand new setup for me we had to work at this one we had to guess it because none of my starting setups would fit uh, so we want 8.5 pen 8.5 there we go uh, 13 uh, 1 9 Uh, minus 3.35 and 0.55 there we go so that will be 100% uh, uh, which will be confirmed once we've done our first run right uh, do I swap out parts um, you know what I'm going to go we'll stick with the same ERS module that one's fine but yeah we'll swap out the engine and the gearbox if we can keep um, our drivers close to each other that can help them earn some extra points by attacking and defending from each other so into quality we go radio check As always, because it's unlikely we're going to get out of this session, even with the fresh engines, uh, we're going to watch our runs in their entirety, because this is going to be it pretty much for quality. Maybe that extra power that we have, while it might not help us too much in quality, might come into effect in the race. As worn engines for the competition continue to wear down even more, while ours will stay at maximum power for this entire race. And they'll be, their wear rate will stay well within the, uh, the threshold for maximum perform performance before they start to... Uh, drop in power so if we're really lucky we might get a little surge up the grid in the second half of the race and if we can get a safety car that will certainly help on board with uh, Freddy we're getting a clean run no traffic that's good Freddy goes purple. He is the fastest on track right now. There's only, <laughs> there's only one, uh, two other cars that are actually on a hot lap right now. And when the Alpine crosses the first sector timing, which will be any moment now, he should take it away, which he has done. Freddy fastest in the middle sector.
So, 132.5 effectively. Oh, Felipe's very close. Less than four hundredths between the two of them. Okay, let's get him back to the garage. Bolt on a, a new set oh, of softs. Let's take a look at the replay. Watch this. We're looking at Lando Norris. Oh, was look that his that. Uh, hot lap or car. was that his out lap? I think that might have been his out lap. Okay, right now we've got quite a bit of pace over the Williams, but I don't know if they had uh, runs where they got held up. Science definitely did. Uh, and even with brand new engines, we're still three tenths off the back of Magnussen. Right, garage is emptied out. Uh, there we go, send both our guys out. Oh, we're actually ahead of the uh, the Alphas. I thought the garage had completely emptied. Right, but Vesti moves through into the uh, front position. But yeah, uh, we're still uh, quite a way off the uh, the back of the Haas, which, you know, having looked at their car performance before the race weekend, probably not that surprising. How much of that gap to the Williams is genuine, though? Is that? Yeah, Science is stuck behind the McLaren, so Science is going to improve, but he's not going to improve by a huge amount. He's not going to get up there at the top, I don't think. Which McLaren is he behind? He's behind Ricardo, the slower of the two. Here we go. Final run. Can we get lucky somehow and sneak a car into the top 15? I doubt it, but it would be nice. We'd have to gain about half a second, basically. And I can't see that happening. We should see an improvement. Uh, track has gripped up a little bit. Not a huge amount, but a little bit. Brand new tyres, and we're actually both drivers are down in the first sector. This is where their, ac their lower accuracy stats don't help. Evening, Anthony. We're at the business end of qualifying, you're just in time to see how far down the grid we're going to start. <laughs> Leclerc takes provisional pole. Sainz actually goes second. Wow, I did not expect to expect that. Verstappen coming up to the line. He's stuck behind a Williams, I think. He goes third. He's going to have a uh, three-place penalty, don't forget, for torpedoing Vesti. Who has not improved at all here.
Ah, Felipe just jumped him at the end thanks to the slipstream there. But yeah. Uh, so that big performance that we had um, over the Williams turned out to be a tenth over Albon. A bit more over Latifi, but you know. Not great. And still nearly four tenths off the back of Mick Schumacher. So it's going to be another painful race. Uh, hmm, what do we do strategy-wise? With the teams and drivers ready and raring to go. There was some good work from Aston Martin during the qualifying session, and they will go to the grid full of confidence. Haas met their potential in qualifying, and they'll be expected to make a good start to the grid. Let's see if they can make it work for them. And the weather is sunny here today, apart from a few clouds. Let's hope they remain scattered on the horizon. 57 laps await our competitors here in Miami, so may the best driver win. Right. What do we do strategy-wise? So that's eight seconds quicker than a one stop. That's seven seconds. Looks like eight seconds to me, but uh, must be rounding up or down. Uh, that is slower. Okay, starting on the hards. What about if I were to Play about with it a little bit. Okay, so that works out at pretty much the same pace as before. It's maybe a second slower, but will give us really good, good pace at the end. I don't think I can make medium, medium soft work. But I'll have a look. Ooh, actually. Race time is two seconds longer. It says one, again, it's rounding up. Um, so it's a, it's a second slower. It will make me more competitive at the start of each stint, but the pace will drop off more towards the back. But if we get a safety car, then we can conserve tyres and keep the pace in the t in the uh, and the grip on the tyres a bit longer. So we're going to go with that. I mean, both of our drivers are pretty decent with their tyre wear, but we're going to try medium, medium, soft. go. Uh, we're going to take a lap of fuel out. I'm hoping we're not going to get lapped twice this race. Uh, so one lap should do. And we're going to play it careful at the start. We're not going to go super aggressive. Now we should have good weather for the race and that will be welcome news for the teams. Taking a look at the Aston Martin. With their starting position in the back 10, they'll have their work cut out for them. There's the second Aston Martin. Slower than most yesterday, so today they'll be starting from the bottom half of the grid. The race start is mere seconds away. And this is it, the Miami Grand Prix. It's lights out, and away we go. All right. Can we get a solid start? Can we sneak a position or two? Will we get a safety car? 
Uh, let's take a look at what the rest of the grid is doing on tyres. I can see Schumacher ahead is on mediums as well. Uh, Ricardo and Norris, Sonoda and Magnussen all on hards. That will help us a little bit. They'll be a little bit slower in this first stint. If we can't get past them, it should at least be easier to stay with them. Hopefully. question is going to be can we stay with Schumacher if we can't stay with Schumacher then we're in trouble because he's not going to be as fast as he could be with the cars in front on those hard tyres and if we can't keep up with him and when he's running to hard tyre pace even if he's on mediums that's going to be very tricky for us I do want to break away from the Williams drivers as quick as we can so we have a sneaky look there at Schumacher in the braking zone, couldn't quite make it work. So, lap two, towards the end of lap two, I am going to uh, start using the battery to try and break the one second to our one. Do not want to drag him up the field with us. Uh, they are both on mediums as well. This is definitely a two-stop race, I think. And there's going to be very few cars, I think, going on a one-stop there. Might be a few, but not too many. We're more likely to see uh, late dashes into the pits for softs. And we are already in danger of dropping off the back. We actually lost some ground to Schumacher thanks to that lunge and then poor exit out of the final turn. So let's go ahead now and uh, deploy our batteries. So use energy. Sorry. We want to try and use the second, this back part of the circuit and then the first half of the, the next lap to try and break away before that first DRS zone. And also to get back onto Schumacher as well. Keep an eye on Magnussen. Uh, he is 12th at the moment. Again, we want him DRS to stay is enabled. DRS is enabled. out of the top 10. We don't want half scoring points if we can help it. Vesti's lining up a look here at uh, Schumacher. And we have broken away from Albon. That's good. Right, I'll leave their battery running for this lap and then we'll turn it off at the end of the lap and see if we can hang with them. Alright, so we're just going to have to stay tucked up for a bit now and hope that we can keep pace with the guys in front. Maybe if we get lucky we can sneak a move up the inside of, in, into a corner.
I think we'd have enough pace to stay with Ricardo for a while if we could get ahead of Schumacher. But I'm happy to stay tucked up behind him like this for now. I'm going to try and squeeze a bit of battery back into Felipe's car. Got to be careful, cannot let him get dropped. Okay, we do have a yellow flag. We're going to lock up. We've got a safety car already. Safety okay. car. Okay. No DRS. It's too early for us to uh, even think about pit stops. But we'll be able to get our fuel loads down a bit, save some tires, get our batteries charged back up. Uh, who crashed? Sounds What's like just happened? We can take a look now. Oh, is he out? The Red Bull. Has he speared somebody else off? The no, just himself this time. That's just desserts for what he did to Freddy Bestie in, uh, in FP2. And the team had such high hopes today. <laughs> what a shame. And he is out. Excellent stuff. I feel much better about that. Kismet indeed, Colin. Kismet indeed. It's especially satisfying because after he torpedoed Freddy into oblivion, sent him to the shadow realm, however you want to put it, uh, he then carried on for the rest of that session. Uh, but here he is uh, without the uh, <laughs> the safety the safety net of a of an Aston Martin to crash into, and he takes himself out instead. And that does mean we are one place closer to actually managing to get a car into the top fifteen. I was hoping for a safety car, but I wasn't hoping for one this early in the race. We haven't even caught it yet. <laughs> the leaders had already gone through by the time the safety car got on track. So we are going to have uh, the two Williams cars close back up on us, but we should be able to break away from them again pretty quickly. Um, as I said, we are going to save some fuel here. We're going to save some tyres. It's letting us get our batteries fully recharged again. It's basically resetting the race, just taking uh, to back to the start again, but taking the stepping out of the equation.
So after five laps of running, uh, Leclerc leads from Perez, then Sainz, Russell, Bottas, Hamilton, Jasly, Joe, Alonso, Ocon. That's your top ten. Uh, Magnussen in 11th he is now one place closer to getting past his first point of the season. That is not good. Uh, Norris, then Sonoda, then Ricardo, then Schumacher. Uh, that brings us to 15th. And then in 16th is Freddy. Uh, Felipe in 17th and then Sue Williams of uh, Albon and Latifi 18th and 19th. Uh, the safety, safety car, car will be is in this lap. Going safety car will be in this lap. lap. Not surprised. I mean, the whole field was pretty much bunched up as it was. One stop doesn't work too marginal. Well, it depends. So there's no overtaking um, until the control line, and there'll be two laps with no DRS. You could make a one-stop work if you have uh, a good enough car. Yeah, that you could, uh, you know, push more, ease the pace okay. down a little bit, and, and still be competitive. But you know, a, a low, a low pecking on a team, yeah, it's, it's going to be a struggle. You can make it work in terms of getting going to distance, but your pace isn't going to be great. So now we have to repeat what we did on lap one. Make sure we can stay with Schumacher. Uh, get away from Albon. Sonoda's already dropped back. Oh, no, he's closed back up again. So, no, yeah, he's already dropped back a second from Norris. Couldn't quite get um, enough battery into Vesti's car, unfortunately, but uh, Felipe's back to uh, pretty much full charge, which is good. We are fluctuating on the point of dropping off DRS, which we should switch on at the start of the next lap. So we will activate our batteries just to close up a little bit, make sure we stay in DRS range. Let's go ahead and do that now. Use energy if you need. And because we've already gapped Albon, we're just going to use enough to make sure we get the DRS and then we'll turn it off again. And there we go. So now we just have to see if we can grab an opportunity when it presents itself. I would imagine Ricardo is going to make a move on Sonoda this and that.
Tell you what, developing parts without using intents, <clears throat> it makes a difference, it really does. Even though we haven't really, you know, we haven't got our first major upgrade in yet. Um, just the minor upgrades that we've done, I've definitely noticed um, less of a gain in performance than I might normally see. Drogovic in danger of dropping off. Let's give him a little boost. Energy if you need it. Okay, go for it. We'll have our new underfloor for the next Grand Prix uh, when we head to Spain. That's tomorrow night. I'm really hoping that that will put us onto a competitive level with at least Schumacher and maybe Sonoda. Maybe even Ricardo. I mean, at least in terms of car pace, uh, you know, driver pace is obviously another thing, but uh, with Ricardo, but uh, we should at least have a car that's very similar to the, to the McLarens, I hope, with our underfloor. It depends on whether or not McLaren bring any upgrades for Barcelona. And we've got to wait till uh, Silverstone for that new front wing. have to remember to make a note of that in our uh, challenge rules breakdown uh, in the description for tomorrow's video uh, we are one major upgrade done on the underfloor and one for the front wing now so we can do one more upgrade for each of those components that's major uh, for the rest of the season. We can still do two major upgrades on the rear wing and then you know, obviously we've still got two major upgrades available for chassis, suspension and side pods but it's unlikely that we'll actually do any major upgrades on those parts. It's it's more about you know the wings and the underfloor for generating the performance and then uh, you know when we are in a position to do research you know using the hours for research of course, we can only do one major research project per part, per season as well. So that'll be one for the underfloor, one for the front wing, one for the rear wing, uh, using hours as a research project. And then any subsequent projects, no hours will be allowed. So Ricardo is past Sonoda. A couple of seconds off the back of his teammate. I don't know if he's going to have enough pace to catch him. Norris has generally been quicker than Ricardo so far this weekend. Ooh, his Vesti just dropped out of DRS there. I think he might have done. Yes, he did. Felipe has got it. 
But I don't think he's going to be able to make an overtake. Not there. Alright, so... Uh, our best bet is whichever one of these two gets into the lead here. Freddy's going to stay ahead. We get him to just push. This is good to come on. Uh, we'll get Drogovic to go along for the ride needed. as well. But we haven't got a lot of battery left in the car. Uh, it's going to be tough to get back in this DRS here. But ideally, we want to try and hang on in there if we can. Uh, let's take a look at our tyre wear because we did manage to extend the tyre slightly. Let's go ahead and just tweak our strategy a little bit. go. Those uh, two laps of uh, crawling behind the safety car certainly did allow us to save a little bit of extra tyres. Get one more lap out of these before we pit. That will have a nice positive knock-on effect for the remaining stints. I think we've just about managed to get back into DRS here. Yes, we did. Thank God for that. Okay. Uh, it's neutral to say what little battery we've got left. We're probably going to drain them coming out the final turn. The Schumacher now slips up the inside of Sonoda. We have nothing left now to fight with if we drop off as Latifi pits. So, are we going to start seeing medium drivers pit this lap? We have kind of reached the point where the, uh, the hards are probably going to be in better shape now. Let's take a look at tyre wear. Yeah, you can see... Um, We've got more wear than Sonoda, but they're still a faster compound at this point, but not by much. As Latifi goes onto hard tyres, and that's very early for a, you know, it's way too early for a one stop. So he is definitely two stopping. Uh, I would imagine he's going to go onto softs at the end. He's going to have a new set. we can sneak some energy back into the car that would be useful uh, let's give it a try we just need to charge up Perfect. So see, last time around we used all the remaining bit of the battery and that we only use about half the remaining battery so we did save a little bit but it has immediately potentially cost us DRS um, fingers crossed that's not the case I am gonna actually push the fuel a little bit stop lifting coast yeah, through these corners fluctuating so much I'm not quite sure if we're going to get it or not let's go neutral to get the acceleration out of the corner I think we just dropped it yeah we did damn it all right I guess that's pretty much it for us uh, again, there's no point us okay, happy to destroying our strategy, trying yeah, in probably. vain to hang on to a position we're just not going to be able to keep. The 
Let's see if Felipe can get past. Maybe that would be enough to get us back into range. Uh, like I said, if we, if we really push and, and damage the tyres trying to catch back up, A, we, we, we will catch back up, but uh, it will hurt us because we'll have to pit earlier, uh, which will have a knock-on effect on the next stint, which will then have another knock-on effect on the next stint. A short-term gain will be a, a long time loss. We've just got to play this carefully. You beat the step at the last corner. Very nice. What do you win now? Season three? Doing a good job. Keep pushing. Albon pits. So Latifi pitted very early for that uh, first stint. Still too early for Albon to make those tyres last for a one stop. So he will definitely go on to soft at the end. Uh, Latifi may go mediums at the end. We'll see. Um... We might start to see some of the other medium drivers pit. Three seconds off the back of uh, Sonoda. Let's uh, see, is Felipe going to make the move? He's very strong in the final sector, but he's not quite as quick as Vesti earlier, in the, in, uh, earlier on, on in the lap. So uh, we're just another lap away from our pit window. So we're four laps away from our pit stops. Let's go ahead and start putting battery back into, Vest into Felipe's car. And then we'll see if we can get him ahead of Vesti and uh, try and get Vesti charged up. The medium runners are going to go on to hards. The hard runners, um, I don't think, well, some of them might one stop, go hard, medium. Uh, I think more likely they'll go hard, medium, medium or hard, medium, soft. But we're going to have a small window where we're going to be on brand new mediums and they're going to be on old hards that we'll be able to push a little bit in terms of pace and, and close the gap maybe even undercut a couple of them and i'm thinking sonoda and ricardo
Got to be careful, though, that we don't get undercut by Albon. Twenty-five seconds should be more than enough. Uh, a little bit of Formula 1 news for you for today. Uh, it's been confirmed... Well, two bits of Formula 1 news, actually. Uh, it's been confirmed that um, La Salle, uh, the circuit in Qatar, that was initially uh, thought to be a stopgap um, race added last year with no race this year because of the World Cup and then next year... Um, would be I think La Salle again before going back to um, or before going to a custom built um, facility at Doha uh, it now looks as though it's going to stay at La Salle for the full 10 year contract uh, they are uh, doing an upgrade to the facilities uh, so that's going to improve pit boxes um, some other features around the circuit but the track it's uh, the track surface is probably going to get changed a bit they might do some work on the curbs but the layout of the track is not going to change uh, drivers actually really like the circuit so uh, yeah um, that looks like it's going to be a you know a permanent addition to the calendar for the next eight years uh, for ne from next season onwards uh, and the other bit of news is that um, Barcelona's circuit, the circuit to Catalonia, uh, has actually approached uh, the FIA and asked them to uh, uh, homologate a second version of the circuit. Um, there are, I think, five circuits in the world that have uh, multiple um, approved circuit layouts. Um, Paul Ricard has got like seven different layouts, I think, or five or six or seven different layouts or, or track configurations that have all been officially approved for motorsport competition by the FIA. Uh, what Barcelona are doing is they are um, a, they have petitioned to um, have the chicane removed as an option um, for the circuit. So they're going to do a little bit of work on the circuit they're going to uh, extend the runoff around turn one um, it's going to knock down some trees to extend that runoff and increase the size of the gravel trap and um, they'll replant some trees in and around the circuit as a, you know to make way for the the ones that they're losing uh, and they've also asked uh, if they can um, uh, if the FIA would approve the uh, a version of the circuit without that end chicane right before the end of the lap uh, as well so that you know uh, there'll be two versions of that track configuration uh, available and uh, race uh, event organizers will be able to pick you know, or you know the series you know, that, that goes racing there will be able to pick which configuration they want to use which would be cool I'd love to see the return of the uh, original uh, cornering or at least uh, a variation of the original cornering I'd love to see that chicane go because it's just awful I hate that chicane uh, so yeah there we go uh, two bits of uh, F1 news for you today uh, I'm sure there's more out there but that's what I've seen uh, what do I think of Enrico Cardile um, he's decent he's good he's not the best um, 
but uh, he's, he's pretty solid. He's, uh, he's better than most technical chiefs. He's not horrendously expensive either. I've got another safety car. Ooh! We've had a multiple car crash. Sounds like there's been contact. Let's take a closer look. And it's involved one of the Haas right, cars. This. It's Schumacher. Schumacher. Oh wow! That's essentially what happened to us in FP2. In the there. Uh, so that's Schumacher out and Safe damage car. to Sonoda, who's also got a penalty. Delta positive. Uh, that is perfect timing because we are about to make our pit stops. So let's go ahead and book those stops in. Let's uh, change the pace settings. Save some more fuel. We've just finished charging up the battery. Uh, this is going to help reset the pack as well. Oh, this is perfect timing for us. Drop back a bit. Save fuel. Yeah. Lift and coast will help. Yeah, perfect. Oh, I didn't even see it, but uh, Vesti got passed by Drogovic. I didn't even see where that happened. So all the medium runners at the front of the grid are pitting. That's Perez, Sainz, Russell and Hampton. Oh, Mercedes going for a double stack. Bottas, Alonso, Gasly, Ocon, Magnussen's pitting. Uh, Sonoda's probably going to have to pit because he's going to have damage. Uh, that's a bit of a shame, actually. I was hoping he would stay out a bit longer because he was one of the hard tyre runners. But Ricardo stays out. Um, Copy that. So we should jump Ricardo, and we're going to get out ahead of the two Williams cars because we're running much slower behind the safety car. So we should be able to get both cars turned around and back out again before Albon goes through. Have we even jumped Sonoda as well? Of course, that penalty and the wing change has dropped him behind both of our cars. And we get out ahead of Albon. Beautiful, beautiful. So we're up to 14th and 15th. Uh, we're going to be behind Ocon. Has Ocon pitted? Yes, he has. I don't think we'll be able to keep pace with Ocon, even even if we push. Even though he's on a, a slower compound of tyre, he's just so much, <laughs> so much faster in that Alpine than we are. Um, but if we can stay with him for at least a couple of laps to try and break away from Sonoda, um, or at least to break away from the Williams cars again, that would be uh, that would be good. We are now fuel positive with Vesti and about to go fuel positive with Felipe. Safety car's going to go one more lap. I would imagine. Maybe two, but probably just one more. Uh, who is yet to pit? Uh, so Ricardo, Joe, and Leclerc. Ooh. Oh, and Norris as well. Okay, so those guys might go for a one-stop with this... Uh, you know, the, this being the second safety car, they may try now and go for the one stop. Let's see, how many laps have we done so far? We've done nearly half distance. And 
they've still got you know, effectively 20% to play about with on those tyres, you know, maybe even 30%. So yeah, they, they, they may well not go for a one stop, but they're going to struggle for pace against the rest of the group, the rest of the field, because you know, big dis difference in grip level right now. Uh, and when they do pit, they're going to drop pretty much the back of the grid. In fact, everyone who's just pitted onto hard tyres might possibly go to the end. No overtaking until the control line. So Schumacher is out. Magnussen is currently 12th. Um, but with one, two, three four cars still yet to pit uh, that could get him into the points we're only a couple of places behind if we can manage to get ahead of Ocon and, and, and see if we can hang with him so there is no overtaking until the maybe we can line, capitalize on that no DRS. Anyone who's on mediums right now is going to probably have to make one more stop. I think that's pretty much a given. Oh. Damn it. Push more. Yeah, Got to do that. There we go. Happy to push. Didn't cost us, thankfully. Could be on for our best result of the season here. Thanks to two cars throwing them that were ahead of us throwing themselves out of the race. Uh, we're gonna have to go early with the battery because we're already over Use a second energy. behind. You need it. Use energy. I'm actually gonna try and you can stop lift and coast. Sneak past Doc okay, on coffee. here if I can. It just doesn't quite have the pace. Oh, Ockham gets through past Schumacher, uh, past Magnuson. Alright. That's good. That's very good. If we can get ahead of Magnuson as well, even if it's only for a couple of laps. And we've almost dropped Sonoda. Given that the grid's been reset again like this, we might actually be able to stay on the lead lap, which would be a first for the season. Come on, 
get a good launch out of this corner. Yeah, I don't think we're dropping Sonoda, but we have dropped the Williams. Alright, let's save what little battery we've got left. Yes, lift and coast. Covering. DRS enabled. This is good, come on. Save fuel, save fuel. Ah, oh, there we go. Wow, they're, they're pitting earlier than I was expecting. So we've just gained three places. Joe, Leclerc and Norris all in the pits. They've got to be going mediums, I would imagine. Yeah, mediums for Leclerc. Mediums for Norris. Mediums for Joe. Magnussen's now into the points, um, but we are right behind him. Still waiting on one more car to pit. Who was that? Was it Ricardo? It is. Yeah, Ricardo's going to pit probably at the end of this lap now. got ahead of Sonoda. We did drop Sonoda. And Albon's nabbed him. Oh, yeah. we just lost a huge amount of pace with Vesky. And that's just closed the gap for Albon. You can use energy. That's one thing that I don't like about this circuit is uh, that, that closing hairpin. You can just come to a, a screeching halt sometimes and you just lose a second in that corner. It's uh, a bit ridiculous. Plus, it's very easy to not make the pits on this lap of this, this track as well, which is also very frustrating. Just another car gets close to you and then that's it, you just don't pit. Uh, so it is a circuit where it's very easy to just not be able to get back in the pits after your qualifying lap and, and run out of fuel and, and get eliminated. Alright, we killed our battery but we did get away from Albon in the process. We got back into DRS. And immediately, All because okay, of the concertina fuel, effect, they're straight back on us again. Okay. See what I mean? And that was all because Ricardo went into the pits. We just lost two seconds in that corner. That's something that they are definitely going to need to improve. Uh, if not in this game, then certainly in, in the next iteration. We've lost the DRS again, and now we've got nothing to fight with to get back into it, I don't think.
it's not the problem with the corner itself. The corner does what it's supposed to, which is promote overtaking opportunities um, and slows the field down uh, for entrance to pits as well. But it's just it, in this game, it's very badly coded. Um, so it just it's so easy to just lose an unrealistic amount of time. CFD upgrade, wind tunnel, or design centre? Uh, it depends what level your design centre is at. basically paying 18 million for the uh, chance to hire five more engineers by going to level four with the design center uh, which can be useful in terms of speeding up upgrades but the more engineers you have on a part the less expertise you gain um, you just get it quicker Uh, if you see if D is, is wearing out or your wind is wearing out, they would be much better to, to put the upgrade on. Save yourself some money. And you'll get tangible um, improvement uh, in, in car development as a result of that. Need to charge up. Yeah, copy. Okay, so Leclerc is fighting his way back through. He is on the back of Sonoda right now. And when he gets past, he's almost certainly going to drag Sonoda onto the back of us. Isn't great, but he might help drag us back onto Magnuson. Which would be a good thing. That's why I'm trying to get some battery in the car now. We don't want Haas to score points because at least it keeps us on a level playing field with them and it makes our job of trying to get eighth in the championship a little bit better. But Leclerc's going to get him. He's going to drop him back down to, to 10. And hopefully he'll drag us onto the back of him. Oh, no. Here's the replay. Let's have a look here. This was the Aston Martin. Under oh, pressure from Leclerc, pressure. locks up, breaks his front wing. That's going to be a big blow to the team. Will they be able to recover? 
We'll see. So, it's just front wing damage. It's not great, but it's not the end of the world. Energy, you can use energy. Sorry. Should have kept my mouth shut. Yeah, you should. <laughs> That's kismet for you. Calling for the demise of another driver has uh, affected us. We've just lost so much time to Leclerc already. <laughs> Two seconds. the end of the battery. We need to charge here. Some lift and coast will help that. Yeah, copy. Still for our best results of the season, 11th. it won't finish that way but uh, yeah it's looking good so far let's see what Felipe can do on those uh, brand new hard tyres he's going to the end now as uh, Leclerc gets past Magnussen in the twiddly bit. We are closing on the Tifi. Let's take a look at lap times. Oh yeah, look at that, almost exactly two seconds faster on that last lap. 
But Latifi is going to be stopping again. Uh, he's going to go into better tyres, but he is going to come out behind us. Unfortunately for this is pretty much Freddy's pace. Uh, there's not really anything we can do to boost it without ruining the tyres. We've still got a little way to go before we can pit. Maybe we'll get another safety car. Who knows? We've had two already. <laughs> so you never know. Actually, the player moves up to seventh now. So that puts him at the head of the little train that we're chasing after and dropping further and further away from. And that does unfortunately mean that they're likely to start speeding up as they try and hang on to the back of the player there. Oh, we've had a spin in sector two. Uh, who and where? It's Perez, I think. Let's have a look. So let's look at this. There's Sergio Perez. And this, yes, this is where they spun out. Okay, I think he'll have got away without actually damaging the car there, but it's certainly cost him the lead. Ah, Leclerc's actually gapped Ocon already, so yeah, that's good. That stops the uh, the train we're trying to chase from getting even further away from us at a much faster rate. They're going faster than us as it is. We don't need them getting a, a Ferrari tow on, on top of that. Just over two seconds a lap faster than Latifi again. And uh, a 38.2 for Albon. So about one and a half seconds faster than him. Let's see what we do across the line this time. There we go. Uh, a 136.7 again, so some pretty consistent lap times here for Felipe. Uh, two seconds faster than, Felipe, uh, than uh, Latifi, one and a half faster than Albon. He's definitely closing in on the pair of them.
Okay, so... Joe has joined the fight. And Norris is about to. And there's Ricardo a little bit further back. Um, is the Williams lapping faster than Vesti? No, we are still lapping faster than the Williams. That's good. Felipe is almost in striking range now of Latifi. Just another couple of laps and he'll be on him. And we are starting to get to the pit window for Vesti. So we're looking at stopping in about four laps. Bolt on some brand new softs. And hopefully show a little bit of pace at the end. Who knows, it might even help uh, bring uh, Felipe back up the order a little bit as well. If he can hang on to the back of Vesti on his softs. I would love to be able to put battery in the car, but right now Vesti cannot afford to uh, go into charge mode. He's got to keep his pace going. Magnussen is also going to have to stop, as is Sonoda. Um, probably Joe and Norris. Ricardo is possibly going to the end. Joe and Norris might go to the end, I'm not sure. No one diving for the pits. We are falling further and further behind. Um, Magnuson at the moment. That point is slipping further away from us. Even if we were to undercut by a couple of laps, it wouldn't be enough to close the gap to Magnuson. We've got to hope he makes a mistake or one of these cars that's behind us and catch the back of him and overtake him. Which, if he's pitting again, will probably happen. It's just whether he's going to have enough pace to fight his way back through again. I'm hoping the answer to that is no. Felipe has just about caught Latifi, so I'm going to put Latifi into, um, sorry, put Felipe into harvest mode now. Now that he's done the hard work of uh, closing that gap down quickly, now we can afford to uh, ease his pace off a little bit while we're doing this and still stay close to Latifi for DRS.
And have we completed the move? Latifi's on our inside. We it's do. Good. Excellent stuff. Uh, now we've got an 11 second gap to Looks Albon. Like Aston Martin have just gained a race position. Let's go back into uh, neutral. See if we can break away from the Latifi. Uh, Vesti almost in his pit window is still ahead of uh, Sonoda, Joe, Norris and now Ricardo has joined the fight as well. So we're certainly playing spoiler uh, for the cars behind us here. Uh, which may help Freddy. Uh, sorry, may help uh, Felipe. Because at least... A couple of these cars are going to have to pit. There goes Leclerc into the pits. Okay, what's he's got to be going soft, surely. Uh, McLaren are bringing a car in. Oh, he's going mediums. Didn't expect that. Okay. Okay, Joe's pitting. So is Norris. Joe goes for new mediums. Sorry, Norris goes for mediums. Uh, Joe also goes for mediums. Latifi's now into the pits, having uh, just been passed. Can Felipe jump Joe, or at least get on the back of him? Okay, just about. Okay, if he can hang on to him, that'll that'll help. Uh, right, we need to box Vesti this lap. Let's just go push on the tyres. We just need to push now. Yeah, probably. Bolt on some new softs. Box, 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 box. Otherwise, we're going to get undercut by Joe oh, here and Norris. And if we don't pit this lap, Ricardo's almost certainly going to, I would imagine. Maybe even uh, Sonoda as well. Yeah, okay, they both stay out. Okay, interesting. Uh, there we go, the pit crew coming out from Mercedes, uh, for McLaren. So, Ricardo's pitting at the end of this lap. Uh, Williams out for Albon. That's Alfa Romeo out for uh, Bottas, I would imagine, because Joe pitted already. Oh, we just get out behind Norris, but ahead of Joe. Uh, Felipe's already been dropped quite con convincingly. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he just isn't going to have the pace to stay with Joe. So we'll just let him run at his pace he's running at. going to swoop around the outside of us here I would imagine or maybe cut to the inside no it doesn't there's Bottas in the pits I've got no battery to fight so I'm gonna go into harvest mode you now and encourage yeah, Joe to overtake me in the DRS straight and then we can try and hang with him in his DRS for a couple of laps. Alpha. OK, 
Okay, Albon and Ricardo into the pits. We're going to pass Albon with uh, both cars. Can we get Felipe ahead of uh, Ricardo? No, but he is behind him, so it gives us another chance now to stay with uh, a car in front of us. Ricardo has gone mediums as well. Pits. Energy if you need it. Love it. You can stop lift and coast. Probably. You might have stayed in charge mode a bit too long with Vesti there. Hopefully I can close him back up just by running a little bit of uh, a better fuel pace. Uh, Felipe's out of battery, but he has managed to stay with Ricardo for another lap. Bottas gets uh, ahead of Leclerc again. Magnussen is ninth right now, thanks to Alonso pitting. Magnussen has yet to pit. Uh, Sonoda is yet to pit. So they are both going to drop back. But they're going to go on to softs at this stage. Um, Magnus is probably going to come out ahead of us as well. So use energy. Okay, copy. And there we go, it's into the pits. Soft tyres going on. Are they scrubs or are they new? We have low battery. Nothing. Are they brand new? Oof. Sonoda hasn't pitted yet, so that's going to put Magnussen straight back into the top ten. Ah, uh, yeah. Haas are getting points this weekend. Just about got back into range of uh, Joe. Can I stay there? Are you kidding me? Just got no acceleration at the corners at the moment. Hampton pits. That's going to drop him behind Leclerc, I think. Sonoda. Sonoda's going to come out behind us. I can't really push those tyres at that pace anymore. Okay, happy to lift and coast. 
So 13th and 15th, this is going to be our best finish if we can hold on to these positions. Djokovic is almost certainly going to get past. He's just not going to have the pace on those uh, hard tyres. But maybe Freddy can hold on. And that would be some consolation for the loss of engine components and uh, Haas getting a point would be to get our best results of the season and at least uh, stop the run of disappointing results that's going to start affecting our confidence with, with the board even on soft tyres, brand new soft tyres we just didn't have enough pace to stay with Joe that's disappointing but new underfloor uh, next race. So hopefully that will uh, give us a bit more of a, a boost. as though we are going to be able to stay on the lead lap which is nice but it took two safety cars to make that happen <laughs> so we are still somewhat lacking in the pace department yeah, like I said new underfloor for Barcelona hopefully that will make us a bit more competitive I don't want to spend the whole season strapping for 15th place. I'd like to see if we can occasionally challenge for points if conditions are favourable. And then, yeah, we came into this race with a brand new engine, uh, brand new everything for Vesti. Um, and even now we're scrapping over 13th and 14th. You know, most of the fields still running their original um, you know, engine number one. It just shows just how off the pace we are. We need that on the floor. All right, Sonoda has uh, closed the gap to just over a second to Felipe. So that pass is going to happen in the next lap or two. Oh, he squeezes into the wall there. I mean, we've got DRS, but he squeezes into the barrier. We had to lift very heavily there. And now we're in danger of losing the DRS straight away, which is what's happened.
cannot afford to lose the DRS to Ricardo. So use energy if you need it. Yeah, copy. Oh god, we lost so much time in that corner. Lost half a second in that corner. Maybe if we're lucky, we can make it back here in the Twiddly. Nope. There we go. <laughs> ah, that's not good. That's not good at all. Okay, so 14th and 15th, it's um, it's not ideal. Save fuel. It's actually quite disappointing considering where we were running earlier. Uh, we would have been further up with Felipe had he not hit the barrier. We recovered quite nicely to get him up to 15th, but Sonoda is about to make a move. There he goes. And we're going to be Let's pretty focus. much powerless to stay with him. That's a position gained for Alpha Tauri. DRS again already. That's ridiculous. Use energy. Yeah, copy. And now I think Sonoda's quite likely to get ahead of uh, Vesti as well. Yeah, we've just got no pace. We can't stay with any of these cars that are getting past us. Five more laps, five more laps. All we can do now is just hope for a miracle, really. Keep an eye out for Sonoda. There he is, just coming into the distance there. Okay, four laps to go. Five seconds is the gap. Four more laps, four more laps. Okay. 
feeling a little deflated right now. I was quietly optimistic about uh, 20 laps ago <laughs> of a decent result here. Uh, and it's all falling apart again. We just, we're so lacking at the moment. I'm really hoping that that new underfloor in the next race will give us the pace to at least stay with some of these cars like uh, like not Ricardo, um, like Sonoda, maybe Joe. Oh, hello, Bottas in the pits. Are we going to see some last minute pit stops? Uh, Gasly, Ocon, Russell, the leaders? Surely not. Bottas giving up a lot of positions there. Oh, he's promoted Magnussen, hasn't he? He's going to count right behind him, though, on... Mmm, better softs. Three more laps, three more laps. But can he get past him again? That's the question. Should be able to. Magnuson's clinging on to Gasly for dear life at the moment. Oh, yellow flag in sector two. Just saw one running wide. Damn it. Someone's run wide. Gap down to three and a half seconds. I think we can do. Let's see. It's two and a half laps to go. Sonoda is lapping a second a lap faster. It's going to be close. It's going to be very close. I think we can just. Well, if we can keep him out of DRS, which is going to be tricky, then. Uh, we might just hang on. You can stop lifting coast. Robbie. Two more naps, two more naps. don't actually know if we're going to get a payout from this. Let's have a look. What do we do with the sponsors? Uh, finish position was two in the top 15, which we're not going to make. Uh, one in the top 15 for two races, though. Uh, we will get one of the, that streak done. Uh, regardless of whether or not Sonoda gets, Sonoda gets past us. And I don't think he will. So, yeah, we just have to make some money. Just not today. Hopefully, uh, hopefully tomorrow night. So this is last lap. Last lap, you can push the tyres. Bottas is uh, not gaining on Magnussen, who's in eighth now. How did that happen? 
Gasly must have uh, been the one who ran wide. we go uh, we managed to avoid giving away DRS in the final back straight there and he's not going to get it here going up to the line either so we hang on for 14th that I think is our best finishing result of the season Check it flag. Check it flag. but I have to say I'm a little disappointed with 14th I had hoped we could have got a little higher than that given how things were going earlier in the race uh, and let's not forget Schumacher and Verstappen taking themselves out that would basically translate to 16th and uh, no 16th uh, not 14th because we just didn't have pace to stay with anybody here what an incredible outcome for Aston Martin's driver Aston Martin having an extremely good day at the track. You can see that the team runs like a well oiled. Celebrate that hard, guys. Everything was precise and on point this weekend. With the race wrapped up, the team is ranked in ninth in the constructor standings. Formula One will be back to Europe for the next round on the shores of the Mediterranean with some heated competition to look forward to in Spain. So, uh, let's have a look at the final running order. Uh, Fernando, one of the biggest uh, movers, as was Ocon and, well, unfortunately, Magnussen as well. Scoring points and big points, effectively. Four points, that just makes our task much harder at uh, getting uh, eighth in the championship now. Uh, but all three of those drivers getting four places. Uh, disappointing race with Bottas. Uh, that late pit stop just killed him. He was running in fourth place. And then, yeah. Very strange. Uh, Gasly's late spin, or running wide, handed extra points to Magnussen as well, which didn't help us. Uh, a decent performance for Vesti, gained four places off the line. Felipe only getting the one, obviously breaking his front wing did not help at all there. Uh, bad race for Max, retiring after just three laps. Uh, driver's standings, uh, Sainz increases his lead in the, constructors champ in the Drivers' Championship with another win. That's his third win of the season in five races. Good start to the season for Carlos there. Uh, Leclerc moves into second uh, with his uh, third place and fastest lap in that race there. Uh, Perez's second place moves him up into third. Uh, he is seven points, eight points off of Leclerc. Max dropping two places after failing to score this weekend. Uh, Hamilton closes uh, a little bit, but... Uh, yeah, it's a good result for him in terms of uh, where he was in the championship. He jumps over Bottas, um, uh, who is now coming under big pressure from George Russell. A strong result for, uh, for Mercedes this weekend. Uh, 22 points. Freddie actually moves up in the uh, driver's standings, thanks to that 14th place goes ahead of Mick Schumacher but there we go in the Constructors Championship that's the bad news uh, Haas off the mark and with four points Alpha Tauri picking up another point as well to get them up to five given where our car's performance is at the moment that makes 
it very hard to see who we could possibly you know get past to score points it's all down to the performance of that on the floor is that going to be enough to get us into positions where when things go our way we can capitalize and sneak a point or two like Magnuson did today who knows uh, we'll have to wait and see I suppose let's take a look at our performances uh, Felipe gets a point uh, it was an impressive result for uh, Freddy Vesti there uh, 10 successful no one successful overtake 27 though successful defenses very good uh, three failed overtakes four failed defenses uh, again just didn't have the pace to try and make any overtakes uh, in terms of uh, Felipe, two successful overtakes, only four successful defences, 13 failed overtakes, four failed defences. Uh, there you can see the points we lost in practice. We only gained five points in practice one, uh, sorry, practice two, thanks to um, uh, thanks to Max there. That would have been an extra, let's see, 1.73. Uh, that would have been... I think here. Would have been an extra uh, if we got the full thirty. That would have been a nice little boost um, to his score. It might not have been enough to get him a point in total but it, w it certainly would have helped um, let's see sponsorship wise uh, yeah we didn't get any of our incentives uh, but we did get one knocked off on the streak and if we can repeat that feat uh, tomorrow night when we go to Barcelona uh, then we will actually finally get some money from, <laughs> from, uh, from an incentive uh, which would be nice Right, let's allocate out the point to Felipe. Uh, once again, we're going to boost his braking. Let's take a look at Freddy. How far away is he? He's 800 points away from getting his next development point. Uh, so he will get that in the next race. Uh, we desperately need more points in his braking here. That is what's holding him up really badly. I mean, his cornering isn't amazing. His reactions aren't stellar, but you know they're decent. Uh, his accuracy is decent. Um, as long as the races stay dry, we don't have to worry about his low adaptability. But yeah, his braking is what's really holding him back right now. Uh, as for Felipe, um, his braking obviously a, a lot better. Uh, his cornering pace and reactions aren't quite as good. His accuracy is definitely not quite as good. Um, and yeah, if it rains, well, he's he's kind of screwed. But um, yeah, again, the more he races, and now that we've got um, another upgrade going through on the uh, on the race simulator, that'll help boost XP level gains uh, even more once that upgrade goes through. Uh, we do have some money in the bank. Uh, I'm not sure what we're going to spend that on, if anything. Uh, probably nothing for now. We might save up for... Uh, a CFD or a wind tunnel upgrade uh, but we are 11 days away from the next Grand Prix and as you can see in 11 days we get that new underfloor and that will hopefully give us uh, a little bit more pace in the car let's get our emails out of the way um, board were unhappy that we were below expectation I mean yeah I mean, it's not below my expectation. What do they actually think? Were they satisfied? Disappointed? They were satisfied. Okay, well that has at least arrested that slide of disappointing results. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's all we can say about that, really. Uh, it's fingers crossed, basically, for tomorrow night and hoping that that uh, underfloor is going to have 
uh, a really positive impact on our car uh, and uh, certainly give us a little bit more cornering pace etc maybe reduce the drag on the car a little bit um, hopefully improve the acceleration a little bit as well we shall see when uh, when that gets done so uh, that's it for tonight uh, we will be back uh, same time tomorrow night 10 p.m uk time uh, that will be for race six uh, the barcelona uh, grand prix in spain uh, and as i said we will be unleashing a brand new major upgrade onto the car that on the floor will be complete uh, right in time for the Grand Prix. So uh, until tomorrow night, thanks for watching. I am Jim Bob, and I will catch you all again very soon. <laughs>